Good morning, or afternoon, whatever it is for you guys. Um, I know it's been a while. <laughs> um, I'm back in my greenhouse. It is actually warming up. I'm actually going to get ready to probably take this hat off soon because it's it's getting toasty in here. Um, it's it's been a crazy week. I thought I had gotten the uh, critter out of this greenhouse, but apparently I didn't, and it ate my starts. Um, yeah. Luckily, I still got about six weeks till planting time, so thank goodness. Um, but yeah, it, it ate quite a few of my little seedlings. It ate um, an entire tray of peppers and an entire tray of brassicas. Yay. <laughs> So, it's time to start my seeds. So today, we're planting peppers. Again. <laughs> um, I did find these really cool trays at a uh, thrift store. Um, use what you have, and you don't have to go buy those um, seed starting trays that, um, that I've seen. But these are almost the exact same depth of those. They're just a little shallower. Um, I will have to drill holes in them, but if you notice, these are going to be really good for starting my tomatoes and then some of my peppers because I can tease those guys apart. Um, these are great for starting um, the seeds that you can tease apart like the onions, the peppers, the tomatoes, those kind of things. Um, so you don't you don't have to worry about starting those in single trays like this one, which oh my lavender poppies are coming up that I've neglected. Sidetracking. <laughs> Sorry, a little sidetrack there, but I've neglected these because I didn't think they were gonna grow, and they're popping up. So they need to be watered. But anyway, squirrel. <laughs> Today we're going to be starting our peppers in these guys, um, and know that you can start in just about anything. They don't have to be the expensive stuff from the store. Use what you have. Um, I just happened to see these at the store and was like, I want to try those. Um, and they were cheap too at one of the dollar stores or the thrift stores that I frequent. So yeah, let's uh, let's get planting.
<sighs> I've miscalculated a little bit on how much soil I needed, so I'm going to have to mix some more. Um, you don't have to pre-moisten your soil unless you really want to. I like to pre-moisten my soil just because it's easier to know um, that it's at the right moisture level for me. Because sometimes if I try to do it um, after it's already in here, the bottom doesn't get moist enough and then it dries out. So I like to moisten my soil first. Um, but let me mix up some more and then we'll get back to it. Most of you have pretty much already seen me. Oh, hello guys. Where are you going? Come back over here. <laughs> Most of you guys have already seen me pretty much mix my soil, but just in case. I I use a, uh, for right now, I'm using one of these pots because my scooper has disappeared. <laughs> um, but I do about two scoops of the vermiculite and then come on peat moss uh, I use peat moss and I know not everybody likes using peat moss um, it's your choice whatever you want to use um, I sift mine just because I've found that if I don't sift it um, sometimes my seeds don't germinate all that well because of all the chunks that are in here. Um, especially when I'm doing soil blocks. With these, I don't particularly have to sift it. I just like to sift it. Um, and it's all about preference, really, guys. Um, and for peat moss, I usually use about four scoops. Um, and then I'll put in a scoop of the uh, perlite, which... I know you don't have to use perlite with vermiculite, but and I haven't really done an experiment to see the difference yet, so that'll be the next one. Maybe we'll see what, we'll do a, a test of just vermiculite and the um, peat moss, and then we'll do peat moss and perlite and see which one the seeds germinate in better. Dump that in my, where'd my bucket go? See, I cleaned up. <laughs> and then I've forgotten where I put everything. <laughs> there it is. Where it belongs. What a shocker. Now, what I'm going to do with some of those, of course, are going to be peppers and tomatoes. They're peppers and tomatoes. Um, but I'm actually going to do something a little different this year. Um, I'm going to test out and see how it works since it's easy to tell the difference between pepper and tomato plants. I think I might mix them and do peppers on one side and tomatoes on one side of the bucket and see germination rate wise if that affects anything. It's just a fun experiment. This year's all about experimenting. And hopefully I can get that blasted creature out of my greenhouse, which I thought was gone. Don't know where it's coming from, but I thought I found all the holes and fixed them. I even fixed a hole in the plastic, which I've got to remember to order more because it's getting to be that time of year. It's been I think three years since I ordered plastic, and so far it's holding up good. It's just got a few holes in it, which I may just patch the rest of those holes that I've seen, the little tiny ones, and not worry about plastic this year and wait till next season. Since it's holding up really well, even with the PVC, surprisingly. Um, and I've seen a lot of things that said, don't put your plastic directly on the PVC, put something over it. And so far, I mean, it has 
some of the life in it is not as great as it would be if I didn't have the PVC. But if it's what you got, use it. And as most of you know, this is a completely Frankenstein greenhouse. It was made um, out of salvaged parts. The entire bottom is uh, pallets. And then I've got um, old fencing um, covering up the outside um, on most on three sides. And then the other side is actually the fence to my garden, which is probably where the little creatures are getting in. I'm going to have to redo the uh, some of the pieces there. And I've lost count. I think that was just three. But let's turn this up a second. Sift yours. I think I've said that already, but that's okay. Um, it's preference for me. I don't want all the chunks in there. Um, I know it doesn't hurt anything for the chunks for what I'm doing in these, but the, with the soil block, it really um, interferes with um, their roots and all that. But let me get this last one sifted, and then I'll bring you guys back to. Now the stuff that I left, I'm going to be um, you're still using that stuff, but that's a good way. Uh, I'll use it in either one of my pots that I've got down here that needs to be uh, transplanted, so it needs a little more um, organic matter, or sometimes I just throw it in my compost bucket um, and give the worms a little ad added stuff in there. Um, because the combo spin is all trash cans now. Um, I was doing it on the ground and it was nice, but the ground kept leaching all my nutrients out of there and I wasn't getting hot enough because I don't think I had the right ratios. And so doing more of a verma compost bin, see how it works. So we'll see. But it looks like this may need some more water. I don't. Sometimes with this stuff, I'll leave it overnight. Just so it soaks it up better. Because sometimes it does better with an overnight or at least an hour, two hours soak. And then I come back and um, it's absorbed all the moisture. Because peat moss, when it's dry... It can take forever sometimes to get it moist again. Um, but anyway, it looks like this stuff might be working well. There we go. I'm going to have to play with them a little bit because some of them I've got to fix because they're going to be too um, too high and I definitely need to add a little bit on the top if I don't get the seeds buried enough. get these all ready and let's plant. Alright guys, so we are going to get these kind of topped and situated where they're supposed to be. And then we are going to plant, um, like I said earlier, I'm going to do tomatoes and peppers in each of them. So each one is going to have a tomato on one side and a pepper on the other. 
Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I can tell the difference between the peppers and the tomatoes. If I did two sets of tomatoes in there, I wouldn't know the difference between the tomatoes um, until they produced a tomato. Um, so, if I plan on trying to sell some of these, which I'm going to most likely be doing, I want to know what variety it is so I can tell whoever is purchasing it the variety. Because um, that's the, one of the worst things you can do is not know the variety and try to sell it to somebody and be like, well, it's a tomato. <laughs> I don't know what kind it is. Um, so, I'm going to be taking these and doing half peppers and half tomatoes. Um, that'll leave me 11 different pepper varieties and 11 different tomato varieties to plant. So, let's get planting and see which ones we do. Alright, so, here we go. Now I am going to do a couple hot peppers just because um, I don't eat them, but um, I had a request um, the other day that if I could do hot peppers, and so if it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out, but somebody will eat them. You want to stick them in here, but you also want to stick them in where you can still tease them apart. So you don't want their roots to be like right on top of each other. With the onions, they can be a little closer because they, you can pull them apart a little easier. These, sometimes they work wonderful, sometimes not. And I'm putting more than I normally would in because these seeds are actually from like 2017, I think. So these are a little older. So I'm adding a few extra here just in case they don't grow. Um, which, with my luck, all of them will grow. And then I'll have a boatload of power plants. <laughs> but that's okay rather have too many peppers than not enough peppers. Um, some of these have been written on and I'm just being lazy and not covering them up um, or erasing what's on them. Others have not been um, written on yet. I'm trying to use the ones, some of them that are already written on, um, but it's not like a world's going to end if I use um, the ones that are already written on. And we'll speed through some of this so you guys don't get bored watching me just pop peppers. <laughs> so I'll see you guys again when uh, when there's tomatoes.
All right, so we're going to start the uh, paste tomatoes and the cherry tomatoes today. Um, I'll do some bigger ones um, probably later, but we're going to start with these little puppies. Um, and I got some new ones this year. So let's start off with our cherries. This one's my new one this year. Can't wait to try this one. Oh, and the one I put two peppers in, that one's my personal one, so don't worry about me mixing those up. Um, those are going to my garden. Um, I'm not going to try to sell those. Because those are varieties I want to grow. For me. <laughs> Babies have all been tucked in, and time to put them up. So uh, I'll see you guys next time, and uh, hopefully in about a week to two weeks, uh, we'll see some uh, germination. Bye.